Steven, let's get into our little, our, our fireside chat. And really what I love about these is that while we've had some excellent talks about more technical issues, there's a lot more to, to being a software engineer than just the technical, right? Like there's this whole other side to having your career where it's not just soft skills. I feel like it's, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's the dev life, right? That's kind of what, what term I've gone with on this is that it's very much the developer lifestyle and how to be successful in all the different parts of your career. And that's why you're here really tonight is to share things that you've found that have helped you. And I'm really eager to hear some of your answers, but also just to get to know you. I think, you know, we've, we've had a chance to read some of your articles. I know you've given talks across the globe you know, you, you've shared all this great angular content, but who is Steven? Like who is Steven? Not the developer, but who is Steven? So I'd love to ask you some questions about you. Um, and for anybody that doesn't know, Steven is, uh, he currently works at AG grid and you're the software, the senior software, um, architect. Is that. Yeah, no, I'm just, I guess I'm one of the, the dev team. Okay. Uh, I guess we're, yeah, there's what, about 10, 10 devs now. 10 of so nice. Fairly, fairly flat, but yeah, it's, it's a nice, it's, nice place to work. It's been exciting though, to see AG Grid grow. Cause I know like uh, at my, with my time at NG Comp, it was kind of, I don't know, just watching the company grow and grow and grow. And then last year you guys were the premier sponsor. It was really, you know, I think just this a great example of how you guys have really expanded your code and you've kind of taken over the world with with grids so that's been exciting to watch but that being said though ag grid is a british company and and obviously you have a great accent so i'd love to find out like what what was a favorite candy or treat of yours there in england as you were growing up so i probably be like a jam roll like a swiss okay. roll i don't know if you have those as well but you know it's, and is this like a cake, cake thing or like a it's cookie a cake. yeah okay no, okay cake. we definitely have those like a long roll it's got jam and cream on it all rolled up and chop it down and it's a slice okay and i think we'd call those like a log here egg. something like a log but it sounds <laughs> good so then I'm assuming you've been to America, right? You've, I think you've traveled I'm here last year to NG okay. Comp. That was the first time. Okay. And did you have a treat or something that really took you while you were here? Something you just loved? Yeah. Uh, is it Reese's? The cupcakes? Yeah. Uh, like the, the peanut butter cups? Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, Good amazing. choice. <laughs> did you get to try Reese's Pieces? They they look like Skittles almost, but they're just peanut butter inside of milk. It, they're so good. So that'll have to be when you come in June for this NG Conf. I'm going to have some for you. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Then what has been one of your proudest achievements as a software engineer? So I, hmm. It's kind of it's a big question. Different. Yeah, there's two different ways um, about that. So I guess one thing could be, I think, getting to give a talk at Angular Connect um, and, you know, working on, a, I guess, a problem that I had, which was, and it came out, the solution being NG template outlets. And, yeah. Um, and I think being able to produce that talk, being given the opportunity to do it, and then, you know, having it so well received, felt really and it, yeah it did feel feel good and because at the same time you're doing something which is completely that was completely new to me um but then the fact that you you know you really are sharing I guess knowledge that you've learned um so yeah that was that was good but then I guess from a software point of view one of the things I did at my previous previous company was pulled together a few different tools so like for forms it was um formally we had ag grid and we had ng x component was it component store from ngrx and like put these together in a mini little library to have um 
just like a standalone component, which not standalone, but they didn't exist then. Um, but like an editable table, and you just gave it your database schema, and it matched up with a URL, which then pulled in data um, from some SQL databases, and became a very quick way to spin up like loads and loads of configuration editors. And then, so it was just to see other devs then pick up that tool and start using it, and and seeing how you can. I guess it's um, was it multiply your yeah. impact on a company by creating these good, I guess, almost like library um, type things. And I guess that's probably one of the reasons I've then gone on to, you know, join AG Grid because it's that yep. same concept of working on a library, which then can help other developers right. know, speed up their development. Yeah, I love that. So just that process of innovating and coming up with things that other people can use. Yeah. That's That's awesome. And I also really liked your first answer though, because that's something... I think a lot of us really can relate to where you don't necessarily feel ready for opportunities that come your way sometimes, right? I think a lot of times we don't feel like we're up to par or we look at the other developers around us and we go, well, gee, like there's all these other people who are so much better than I am, or they're yeah. more prepared than I am. Why me? You know why? But at the same time, like that opportunity is, is yours for the taking. So do you have any advice about that? Because I think a lot of times we either hold ourselves back or we might even talk ourselves out of it. But do you have advice to give to people for if there is an opportunity, how can you help them make sure they don't let it slip through their fingers? I mean, I'm, this is definitely something which I've learned going you know and this is one of the things I guess where experience teaches you that you can go for these things and it's all right to fail at these things um, yes. so it was like yeah for that talk I I guess I saw um there was the call for papers for for Angular Connect and I I, I nearly didn't bother <laughs> um submitting a talk because I was like well you know that I I've done nothing you know they don't know me um but I think the the one of the key things was they had an office hours um, mm -hmm. for that. And so, again, it was like, oh, I might as well try, you know, and, and I just sat down, I put the the call in and I spoke to the organizers and they were like, this is actually a really good idea. And so I think it's that then encouragement to say, oh, actually, you know, maybe this is something which I can do. Um, so I think you've just got to back yourself sometimes. Yeah. And it's and it's a great way of growing as a developer as well um to say that actually i don't know the solution to this or i you know i've never given a talk at a meetup before or a, or a presentation at a conference but i think we can all do more than we think and if you don't give yourself the opportunity to try these things then you're definitely not going to be able to do it yeah and so so and I think that is it's a bit of a, a mindset and it gets easier the more you do it so like now I can be given a task and you don't know how to do it but you just got to start somewhere and right. you know small steps or, or just that take that risk to try something try something different yeah. Yeah. And like you said, like leaning on other people, like you went to the office hours and you, yeah. you opened yourself up to that vulnerability and, and let other people help you. And I think that really is key. It's kind of like what we were saying earlier, just we are a community and I know that everybody wants to see everybody else succeed. You know, so if you take these chances, nobody wants to see you get up on stage and, and completely fail but there are people here to help. And I think that's so important. But another thing too, with that is how many speakers have you, you know, heard interviews with and you, and, and people will ask them like, how did you get to that point where you felt brave enough to give that talk or, or how did you learn such and such topic? And so many of them will say, well, I didn't, I didn't know that topic. It just was an idea that I had to give for this talk. It was something I was interested in learning. And I put out the application to get that talk and I was selected. So, well, I had to learn it, you know, like I think sometimes taking a chance 
because you're curious about things and you want to learn about them it puts that fire under your bum you know like oh gotta <laughs> learn it now so I think definitely I, I totally agree with that like just being vulnerable and putting yourself in those positions but then like you said like leaning on the people around you and trusting that the community is here to help encourage and support you yeah and I, I think for that that first one it I was fortunate that it. it came out of something that I'd done at work so um it had been really hard to solve you know this problem of making a really customizable component component and at the time there weren't there weren't that many resources on ng template outlet so when I found it it was like oh this is actually really quite useful and I wish someone had had spoken about this yeah um so that's where that one came from but I guess the reason why I thought and I had confidence to apply to speak at the conference is the year before when I was there as an attendee um one of the presenters you know she she stood up on stage and she said you know this is my first talk um I was sitting in the audience last year um but I you know took a brave step and I applied and and here I am and it, and it was that that same inspiration that was thinking oh maybe maybe I can do that as well um and then yeah then <laughs> and it did and it happened as well yeah awesome well, I love that so all right I have one more question for you then uh throughout your career like what are anywhere from like one to three different skills that you feel like have really served you the best to help you be and feel successful uh and these can be like actual technical skills or they could be soft skills as well I mean I think in terms of soft skills it's probably quite important to be like get on <laughs> with people right <laughs> and um and not be um like picking your battles I think can be a, an important thing like sometimes especially in like a pull request or or when you're working together with someone doing some pair programming it's you don't want to be a kind of there which is always very critical very like nitpicking and making things you have to follow your exact pattern so I guess in one sense being a bit flexible like you know saying you know and accepting that devs write things in different ways and and that's okay um sometimes there'll be I guess architectural things which you know you need to get right and that's where you can push back but I think that's it's quite important to I guess yeah is that being flexible and, and respectful and so that you're not discouraging other people because I think you know that goes a long way when people you know respect that and and then I guess treat you in, in a similar way um but I guess from a technical point of view I guess you do I think one of the biggest things which made a massive change in my career was was actually joining Twitter. Um, this is probably off, off the back of one of the Anger Connect conferences and just starting to read articles that other people had written because it, it suddenly exposes you to new approaches, new techniques and just things that you potentially wouldn't come into contact with just in your day-to-day -day work. So I think you know then starting to read that content and maybe then starting to write some content yourself it really forces you to learn I guess at, at another level and really understand concepts so yeah. I think yeah it's that always learning I mean, which I guess is you know kind of what you're doing with your your podcast it's, it's that same like spirit of thinking okay what can I what can I learn and it, and it's often you might not use the the skills you learn immediately but then further down the line you'll come run into a situation where it's oh I've seen something like this and then you right. can hopefully go back and find it and and then use it so I think and and also in terms of in terms of how your manager maybe sees you or your boss or your teammates if you can start bringing in new information it can help you feel like a, a I guess a bit of an expert in that area and even if you're just you know building off other people that have have worked these things out it's if you're the one bring it into into your team and into your company that's really valuable 
Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And just showing that passion that you have, right. Showing that you actually care that you're engaged, you're trying to learn. I think that goes a long way. So definitely. Well, I have nothing to add to that. I think that's kind of a mic drop moment there. Just <laughs> awesomely said, I really appreciate it, but thank you so much for coming tonight for, for this and also for joining in on the angular report with Jason and Preston and sharing your thoughts, but I know you're going to be in Salt Lake for NG comp. So I'm really eager to meet you there and me, and I'm going to have those Reese's pieces for you. I, I promise you that. So <laughs> it's great. It's the only time I get to eat peanut butter because my wife's <laughs> allergic to peanuts. Oh no. <laughs> Darn. So if I'm across the Atlantic, I think it should be safe. <laughs> All the way across. Yeah. There's, there's a good reason for being across the pond then. <laughs>